Pratik Sina, founder of Alt News, as well as an activist of long standing. Pratik Sinha, uh, for many of you and many of the younger people here uh, who follow him, uh, Pratik Sinha is actually a software engineer. He's a techie, he has a software background, but uh, started the truth of Gujarat, which was a very, very uh, interesting uh, space on Facebook and then, of course, on Twitter. Uh, he has a huge following, something that uh, you know, following it runs into thousands in on Twitter as well as on uh, Facebook, and has been since February very systematically calling out fake news for what it is, and debunking the kind of narrative that a lot of fake news is trying to uh, uh, trying to bring out and change in the way in which we respond to the world around us. So uh, we'll start with uh, Pratik because I'd like to ask him to bring in, explain the whole um, way in which he looks at fake news and his own interventions in dealing with fake news and then we will move on to Siddharth. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, it's the election season right now. Um, recently, there were uh, civic body elections in Uttar Pradesh, you know, which concluded about two weeks ago. And right now, elections are going on in Gujarat. So this is the peak time for fake news, you know, because <laughs> so uh, so just before, just about two days before UP civic body elections, um, there was an AIMM rally in Ghaziabad, and uh, next day, Amar Ujala and Jagran, two very prominent newspapers, said either both or one of them. They put out an article claiming that there was a, a Pakistan Zindabad slogans in um, in EIMM rally. Then we contacted the local police there, and it was it apparently was Haji Jishan Zindabad. You know, it, it had got nothing to do with Pakistan Zindabad, but that news went on to social media. From social media, it was picked on by numerous fake news websites. There at least about 200 of them and a lot of them publishing in Hindi. Um, and uh, that was broadcasted all, all across Uttar Pradesh. Uh, a couple of days before that, uh, Hafiz Said was released in Pakistan. And uh, uh, again, one of these two newspapers broke the news that uh, in a small town near Lakhimpur in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Hafiz Said Zindabad slogans were raised and it was claimed that they put out Pakistan flags. So then we spoke to the, uh, the SP there and he said that the flags were uh, triangular so it can't be, you know, uh, Pakistan flag and there were no half a say Zindabad slogans. It was a, essentially a right-wing group there because, you know, the elections there were just three days after that. They were raising this issue. So, uh, then again about a couple of days before that, uh, again somewhere near Lakhimpur and Uttar Pradesh, a, a social media rumors started that uh, uh, there's a Vivekananda statue somewhere near Lakhimpur and one morning it was found that the, the Vivekananda statue has been beheaded. And um, it was claimed on social media that uh, a Muslim man beheaded the Vivekananda statue. We again called up the local police there and they said that you know it has got nothing to do with you know anybody. Uh, it was not from Muslim community. In fact, the person who did that uh, was mentally unstable and he has been arrested. So, uh, you know, these are the kind of news that are propagated right before elections and for a singular purpose. And that singular purpose is to polarize the population to sort of forward a majoritarian narrative so that voting can be along those majoritarian lines. Coming to Gujarat elections, uh, a news was put out, and I'm, I'm not a fan of the Congress party, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, a news was put out that uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi signed the register, he went to Somnath Mandir, and uh, he signed a register which was supposedly non-Hindu register. On Alt News we did a, and then later on the Congress party put out a, uh, uh, the copy of the register, where it, it shows that he's, you know, he's signed in the regular visitor book. And uh, we did a handwriting analysis and it conclusively showed that he had actually 
sign the visitors book and not the non hindu register it's, it's unfortunate that you know this is the kind of discussion we are having doing politics as to whether you know somebody said sign in a hindu register or non hindu register but that is a fact but so we we found that out and we pushed pushed the story uh despite the story being out there on social media and everybody knowing the fact of the matter multiple mainstream media organizations on the next day they led with the headline that rahul gandhi signed a non hindu register uh thereafter uh mr ayer uh, he you know he uh, he was asked about the rahul gandhi press you know election um the election could be or may not be a gimmick but uh, uh, i mean the the congress party election it may or may not be a gimmick but he gave a statement which stated uh, that uh, you know in aurangzeb raj you know uh, or you know during the mughal dynasty essentially you know there were no elections people you know it was the son or whatever you know you know was automatically elevated to the position but that is not how it happens in congress party we have an election and uh, whoever wants to participate in this election is free to part participate in this election multiple mainstream media organizations and again on social media uh, only the first part of the clip was played uh, and uh, we again at all news we put out a story in 2 hours and yet uh, in this time on the you know during the prime time there were very few people who spoke about this but republic you know, we know republic so they they put out this story and they despite the knowledge that you know uh, they were playing an incomplete uh, clip they arnab goswami on prime time insisted that he is not misquoting he is actually playing the entire clip so that is the nature of fake news you know fake news is uh, is something you know which has become a part of everyday life where if you know especially during like election season where as we have seen it is a tool to uh, sort of set the narrative it is a tool to uh, you know divide population along lines of hindu muslim etc but that is something that has been happening for a very very long time i mean uh, you know politicians use this methods but what has changed in the last 2 years and why this has become extremely uh, it has become an extremely powerful tool is that um, you know the availability of mobile internet data in according to statistics in the month of uh, june 2016 as a country we were using about 200 million gbps of data per month in the month of march 2017 that figure has increased to 1.3 billion gbps so in the in a span of 9 months we have seen an unprecedented increase of 6 and a half times and i don't think there are many precedents to this so what that means is that a huge number of pop, you know huge part of our population many of whom probably don't even know that there is a website called google.com you know there, there is a part huge part of our population who does who's not even aware that there is a website called google.com but, but they now have a phone and they have whatsapp and they have this enormous uh you know stream of information coming into their phones every single day and a huge a huge part of this population neither has the tools nor has the education to deal with this enormous amount of information you know so for example a video comes into your whatsapp and i'm giving the example of a video which was viral for over one and a half years despite it being debunked multiple times so the video said uh, ek hindu marwadi ladki andhra pradesh se ek hindu marwadi marwadi ladki usko burqa na pehenne ke liye uh, mara aur zinda jala diya dil dehlane wali video is video ko itna share kare ki ye modi ji tak pahunch jaye aur modi ji ko instant action le and uh, this was a four and a half minute video it is the most stomach churning video you'll ever seen uh, the video was actually from gyotemala where a uh, uh, young girl she probably was in her late teens she and two other guys they shot down a allegedly shot down a taxi driver the two guys ran away she was caught in the mob and this one and a half minute actually shows you know she her being beaten up and burned uh and uh nowhere in the video 
First of all, there are multiple women in the video. Uh, nobody is wearing a burqa. Uh, the language being spoken is a foreign language. It doesn't resemble any Indian language. And yet, because of the introductory text, uh, which is, uh, you know, it evokes an emotion in a large section of our population that such a video keeps, you know, it stays viral for one and a half years. I mean, we debunked it. Uh, this video became viral sometime in Feb 2016. We wrote about it multiple times. The all news started in Feb 2017, but multiple people wrote about it that, you know, this is a video from Guatemala. This has got nothing to do with, but even now, right now, that video is being circulated claiming that this, this is a Hindu Marwadi woman from Madhya Pradesh. And uh, so, so the problem is that you know uh, there there is a section of pop there are people out there who know that they can download any video, and uh, we have shown this multiple times again and again. There are videos from Brazil, Mexico, you know, the most gory videos possible, and uh, just claim that you know either it is a Muslim killing Hindu or a Hindu Muslim killing Muslim. Usually, it is. Uh, it is a, usually it is sort of propagated as Muslims killing Hindu, but you, you put either claim and these things stay viral forever and ever. So essentially what the, you know, the, there are people out there who, you know, who want to abuse people's emotions. They know that, you know, when they put out such a narrative, people are going to press the forward button in anger. You know, as soon as you see that Muslim ne Hindu ko mara ya Hindu ne Muslim ko mara, there's a huge section of our population who will not fact check and instinctively press the forward button. And what that has done is that, uh, you know, besides what politicians do from their, uh, you know, from their podiums, you know, talking about whether it is Ram Mandir, Babri Masjid, Ayodhya, etc., what the social media propaganda has done is that, you know, uh, Barkhadat was recently talking about it that she went to Kashmir and there's such a huge propaganda that she has been married multiple times that somebody asked her, you know, where is your husband? You know, it's, it's been said that she has been married three times and things like that. So people actually believe, you know, people actually believe and internalize what is happening on social media. And unfortunately, the government has taken no cognizance of it. You know, in Jharkhand, seven people were killed purely based on a WhatsApp rumor. The WhatsApp rumor said that, you know, uh, people, uh, you know, your kids will be abducted. You know, some travelers are going to abduct your kids. And seven people were uh, killed. There were about 20 people in the jail on a murder charge. And all this purely based on a WhatsApp rumor. And no government took cognizance of the issue that there is such a huge issue out there that a WhatsApp rumor or a morphed image, for example, in Bashirhat, a morphed image of Islamic place led to the riots. So there is such a big issue out there where, uh, uh, you know, people are now starting to get killed purely based on a WhatsApp rumor. Uh, yet, you know, we, this, you know, such an issue has not been raised by any government whatsoever. So that is where, you know, uh, we decided to come in, sort of, uh, and we started in Feb 2017. There are two other websites who are doing very good work. One is SM Hoxlayer, and another one is Boom Live. So uh, that is what we're doing. Uh, the effort is to, you know, try and debunk these issues as soon as possible. As soon as there is a video, we put out. You know, we put out that, no, this video does not belong to this. This is actual origins of the video. If there's an image claiming certain thing, we put out the actual context. But uh, the challenges that uh, all of us are facing is that, you know, uh, at least in terms of social media debunking, there are very few of us who are doing it, you know. Uh, uh, all teams, we are a team of two full-time, two part-time. Boomla, I know, is a team of three, four. SMOX, there is a single man per, you know, single man army. Uh, even if we put out these things, uh, uh, we, you know, we, uh, there are some outlets who do carry us. You know, Wired has carried some of our stories. News Landry has, Crawl has, but uh, most of the mainstream media all, uh, ignores it. So that is why, you know, even if something is debunked, you know, nobody is willing to actually sort of invest. You know, no mainstream media is willing to invest their time in this issue, which is why it goes on and on forever. So yeah, so that is the issue we are facing these days, and. Um, We'll continue working, but let's see what happens. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prati. Uh, for somebody who's been monitoring uh, fake news, uh, you really know how the architecture of fake news operates and uh, how it spreads and how dangerous it is.